Hello everyone, welcome back, Dom here and in this video I'm going to show you 5 ways that you can use sidechain in Cubase. There are some obvious ones and some not so obvious ones, so let's check them out. Okay, let's start with the obvious one and that's the classic sidechain. So let's say you have a kick drum and you have a bass and you want to make sure that your bass is ducked when your kick drum hits. So for example, the level in volume for the bass goes down when the kick drum hits. There are many reasons why you want to do this. First of all, you might want to do this so that your mix is uncluttered and you make sure that your low end is tamed and you don't have low frequencies building up when the bass and kick drum play together. But the other reason is to create pumping effects, groove, and that's what I'm gonna do here right now. So let's have a listen to this track. Okay, now let's isolate the kick drum and the bass and let's have a listen. It's okay. I have a feeling that they fight with each other for the same frequencies. And also, this bass is a long bass. It's almost like a drone. So it would benefit from a little bit of groove. So let's try and do this using sidechain. In order to add sidechain to this bass, I'm going to use the compressor plugin that we have in Cubase. And it's actually very, very easy. So all you need to do is go here, hit that cogwheel, and then add sidechain source, I'm going to add my kick drum. I can also type kick and it's very easy to find. There we go. Now I'm going to set my level to zero and you can choose if you want to have it post or pre-fader. I tend to go for pre-fader and that's because I don't want the sidechain to be affected by the level that I set on the fader for my kick drum. Let me show you an example. Now that I've set this to pre-fader, I have the flexibility to turn down the level of my kick drum and the sidechain is still going. Now that we've done this, all I need to do is activate this and I have some settings here, feel free to take an example from these settings and use them on your own tracks, but let's listen to how it sounds now. Without it? So this gives me groove, this gives this pumping sound to my bass and the whole track is going to move way better now. Now to talk about the compressor settings very briefly, what I have here is a high ratio, very fast attack, fast release, 45 milliseconds, but this of course will depend on the tempo of your song and the material. I choose to favor peak analysis, so I want to make sure that the compressor grabs those peaks from the kick drum. Makeup gain, I leave it at zero because if you have the auto makeup gain, you're basically under doing what you just did with sidechain, so don't make that mistake. And dry mix is all the way to zero. Then I adjust my threshold and I'm good to go. So let's have a listen. I'm going to play with the parameters a little bit so you can hear how it sounds with different release times. And I tend to go by ear here. Just listen to the groove and see where it takes you and you will find the right release time very easily. I wouldn't use an auto release for this one. So, so now let's listen with and without the sidechain in the context of the mix. So, incredible tool if you want to create some interest, some pumping, some movement to your arrangements. This was a relatively boring bass line, but we made it more interesting using sidechain. Now let me show you the second way that you can use sidechain. And for this one, I'm going to use the new frequency to EQ in sidechain mode. So let's have a listen to this kick drum and this drum loop that I have here. So let's listen to this loop in isolation. And as you can see, this loop has a lot of low end. It also has a kick drum, which in this case is fighting with the kick drum that I want to use. So what do we do? Do we replace the loop? 
Of course not. Let me show you how we can make these two elements work together without sacrificing the body of this loop. So like I said, I'm going to be using frequency two and let me show you what I'm doing. I have a sidechain here, exactly the same way like we did before, but in this case, I can have up to eight sidechains because we can have different sidechains on every band of this EQ. So I'm using sidechain number one and this is a low shelf filter. So let me show you how it sounds without the sidechain and the dynamics. So it sounds thinner, there's more room for the kick drum now, but the problem is I'm missing all the nice thump of the snare and the fullness of the loop as a whole. So I'm going to remedy this using the dynamics mode and the sidechain. So for sidechain, I'm using sidechain one, which is my kick drum. And you will see that now when my kick drum hits, the low end is going to be ducked. So my kick drum will shine, but straight after the kick drum is gone, the fullness of the loop comes back. Let's listen. Without the EQ. See, it's confusing, it's a bit muddy, but when we add the dynamic EQ triggered by the side chain, which is our kick drum in this case, everything becomes more clear, even the kick drum sounds more punchy. And let's listen to what it does in isolation. Hear that? So all this low mid information and the fullness of the loop comes back after the kick drum hits. And you can set this again with the attack, the release, depending on your material. So that's a very cool trick and it can really, really allow you to blend elements together very, very easily. Now the next way you can use sidechain and that's very, very powerful is when you want to make room for important elements in your mix. And in this case, I'm going to do this with vocals because vocals, they need to be upfront, they need to have their space in the mix and mid-range is a frequency range that many instruments are fighting for. So let's play this part of the song. So what is the problem here? We have a vocal and we have a very busy synth harp playing at the same time. And if we use the comparison view in our channel strip, you will see that... They fight pretty much for the same frequencies. So what can we do there? Now, obviously you can use the same trick that I showed you before when we wanted to blend the kick drum and the drum loop but we can do something a little bit more clever here that will not only allow our vocals to cut through, but also it will make our song sound a little bit wider as a result. So let me show you. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm side chaining this synth arp to my vocals. So when my vocals come in, I'm going to have a reduction for my synth arp, but I'm not going to have a general reduction. I'm going to select a band that I'm going to apply this reduction on. So here's the band that I'm using. I'm using band five here, and I'm carving the mids here where my vocals are going to play. But as an extra thing, what I'm doing is I'm using this band in MS mode. So not left, right or stereo, I'm using it in MS mode. So this way, what I'm doing, because my vocals are in the center, I'm just reducing these mid frequencies in the mid signal. The side signal remains completely unaffected. What does that mean? My vocals for the mid channel are going to have room to shine, but then the sides of the synth that have all the stereo information and we want that are going to be there and the vocals are going to be surrounded really nicely with the nice side information of the synth. As you can see, the side channel doesn't have any reduction. It's just right there. I might actually boost it a little bit, to be honest with you. And the mid is going to be reduced when the vocals play. Let's have a listen. I 
out. So it's a subtle difference, but when you remove the sidechain EQ, the vocal becomes unfocused. You can't really hear all the words very clearly, but when you add it back, the vocal sits well and we still have the synths on the sides, but we have a little bit of reduction for the synths in the mids, so we have a little space, a little bit of room for the vocal. So a really powerful trick if you use the Frequency 2 EQ in MS mode. Use it wisely. The fourth way is a really creative one, and that's creating rhythmic gate effects. Let me show you. I'm going to use this vocal. Let's have a listen. I know you say you needed me That your best was good enough And let's say that I want to create a nice rhythmic gated effect with the groove that I have here on this loop. So, it's as simple as slapping on a gate on the vocal channel, side-chaining it to my drum loop, and now all I need to do is fiddle with the parameters a little bit until I get the rhythmic effect that I want. What's going to happen is that when our sidechain input passes that threshold that we set here on the gate, it's going to open the gate. So, that means we won't get any sound until the sidechain signal reaches that threshold that we set here. Let's have a listen. I'm going to have it set at 0 dB and I'm going to gradually bring down the threshold. And let's listen to what we have here. So the settings that I'm using here is a relatively fast attack because I want this transient to open the gate as fast as possible. Then I have a fast release, but I'm also playing with the hold parameter a little bit. If you want a more choppy sound, just set the hold to a low value. If you want more smooth tails, then just raise the hold a little bit. And again, for analysis, I'm using the peak detection. So. And even just changing the threshold a little bit and the hold will give you a very, very different sound. So experiment with it. You can come up with some really cool things using the gate in sidechain mode. You can give interest to pads, to drones, to vocals, to guitars. You can pretty much create amazing rhythmic effects super, super easily. And the fifth way is a really awesome thing. And I don't know how many of you know about this. Let us know in the comments down below. But it's an awesome way to use sidechain. And that's using sidechain with instruments. In this case, I'm going to use sidechain with Retrolog. So let me play this material for you. OK, kind of a relatively bland pad. So did you know that you can process any sound in Cubase, any audio, any instrument using the filters, the effects, the arpeggiator in Retrolog? This is all possible using Sidechain. So what I'm doing here is I'm sending this pad to my Retrolog. Okay, it's right here. And let's open Retrolog. So what I'm doing here is I'm using Retrolog and I'm sidechaining Retrolog to this synth pad. Okay, so as you can see, I've set the synth pad that we just heard as my source. And now the audio of this channel goes into Retrolog. Now, in order to hear it, I need to turn up my input level right here. So as you can see, I'm not using any oscillators, any subs, any noise. I'm just using the sidechain input here. 
And now I can process this sound using the filters, using the arpeggiator and using the effects from Retrolog. So basically Retrolog becomes like a super powerful, supercharged filter and FX processor. Now the only thing that you need to do in order to make this happen, you need to draw a note in your Retrolog MIDI track or play it on your keyboard and then the sound will pass through. If you don't have a note, you're not gonna hear anything. So let's play this pad through Retrolog now and let's see how we can transform it. First of all, I can use the filters and all the filters that we have in Retrolog. So you just got yourself a bunch of amazing filters just by using this technique. So let's go for 18 dB. Now I'm going to use the arpeggiator here. So I'm using the arpeggiator here to get this gated sound. And if I want to automate my filter using my arpeggiator, I can just go like this. So let's automate our filter now. And of course I can even use the distortion here. And add some effects. Phaser. Delay. So that's the fifth and maybe the most creative and unusual way to use sidechain in Cubase. So as you can see, lots and lots of options when it comes to sidechaining in Cubase. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you some great ideas for sidechaining to use on your music. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.